Hey everyone, this is the channel Sharpen. My name is Robert Hall and in today's video, we're gonna be going over the Godox No LED M600D LED. To light this video right now, the only light being used is the No LED M600 LED in its Fresnel FS10. That's a 10 inch Fresnel modifier, which is a firing off into an empty softbox and that light is bouncing back, illuminating the video. And as you can see, it's actually balancing with the daylight, diffused daylight, but still daylight, doing quite a great job of that. And that's not even using a direct source. I only did that for this to be a quick demonstration of the power of the No LED M600. This is is, after all, the most powerful LED offered from Godox. Now, I'm gonna call this the M600 throughout this video because I'm not quite sure if it's no LED, now LED, no LED. So uh, what, what's it called? First off, we need to get one quick quirk out of the way. This is the M600, which would have most people thinking that this is a 600 watt LED, but it's actually a 740 watt LED. Now at 740 watts, if everything else was equal, you would expect that this would be about 1.4 stops brighter than the VL300, but unfortunately it's a little bit shorter than that, more like 1.2 stops brighter. And I think that this is designed to kind of compete with offerings from Nanlite and Apple aperture that are pushing over that 300 barrier. Although now aperture does have a 1200 watt LED. Shine so bright. Now I intentionally have this at a hundred percent right now because another thing that I want to show you is just how quiet the fans are. I'm right next to this. This microphone is really close. If I'm quiet, I'm sure you can hear it a little bit. The fixture right here is pretty much all heat sink with a fan down below right here. So most of the sound comes from below the M600. Now the light up here is actually quite compact. It's not much larger than the VL300. And that is in large part due to the large control box. On this control box, we have a few things. We can control it from the top side here. We have a display for accessing the settings. We have DMX in and outputs on the top here. On either side, we have a V-mount battery, so we can power the M600 using two V-mount batteries. And then we also have two other methods of power. We have a DC 48 volt input, and then we have our AC input if we're connecting it to the wall. Now, compared to other LED products, they really increased the quality of all of the connection points on this device. For instance, on the input for AC power, you put it in, and then you twist it and it locks into place. Now the power output that runs to the light has a equally beefy cable, although it does not have the uh, same twisting mechanism. Instead, you just push and it locks into place. But again, you can hold it by just the cable. I'm not suggesting you do that, but I'm just showing you guys how durable it is. You really don't want to beat on your cables like that. And on the back side of the control box is this V-mount attachment, which they do have an included super clamp to V-mount attachment. That way you can mount this directly to a light stand. On that topic, there's a few notes I'd like to make about the case. Overall, the case is nice quality. It's a two wheel case with a collapsible handle so that you can easily transport this. Everything packs away nicely and it feels secure. The case is pretty well made and it has a similar colorway to the other LED products like the VL300. But there's two things you should know about it. One, that super clamp attachment that I just mentioned is kind of hidden. Where is it? It's underneath where all the cables are stored. Second, something that I find annoying within the case is that in order to pack everything away, that is the M600, its yoke, the control box, cables, and the included reflector, the only way you can pack that away is if the yoke, specifically the stand attachment part, goes into the reflector. So it's really tight and that's the only way that it fits in. It's a little bit annoying if you have no intention of using the reflector, you still have to like bring that out just to get your light out of the case. Now I will say I was impressed with the VL300's yoke. I felt that that was a really nice step up for Godox products and this is just even better. Like the yokes just keep on getting stronger. And one of the nice things about this is that you can fully rotate the light in here. There is no specific position that you cannot hit with the M600 and its yoke design. So that's really cool. In terms of CRI and TLCI, I tested this. It is on par with the VL300 right around a 96 to 97 CRI. Within the menus, they're actually relatively simple. First off, we've got the connection menu options. So wireless, if you are trying to connect to a radio remote, Bluetooth if you're trying to connect it to a phone, and DMX address if you're trying to connect to a DMX board. Beyond that, there's really not many options within the menu. There are a few effects such as like pulsating and strobing effects that you can do with the daylight light. Although again, no color, so not 
too much variety there. There are fan settings within the menu. You have four options, auto, off, low, and high. And each of those settings will control what the max brightness or max power setting that you can set the Godox M600 to. Now, in terms of controlling power, again, you can control it directly on the device. It's very simple. If you turn the dial with a slow speed, it will go up by 0.1%, which is ridiculously tiny control for LED. If you move the dial a little bit more rapidly, you'll start going up 1% at a time. And if you press the dial in as you turn it, you'll go up 10% at a time. So it's very easy to make either very minor adjustments or very rapid adjustments to the light's power. And if that wasn't enough control, there are also four different dimmer settings that change the behavior of how the lighting power ramps up. So first there is the linear setting, which means that if you are at 50% on the light, then it is drawing 50% power, producing 50% of its brightness. S-curve will give you a ton of control through the minimum and maximum power levels, but quickly ramp up through the middle. Exponential will give you a ton of control in the lower brightness while ramping up rapidly at the end. And logarithmic is the opposite. It will ramp up very quickly, but then give you a ton of control at the brightest end of the power range. And beyond that, there's really not much control on the device. There are a few options for language, screen brightness, reset, and something to check the firmware. Now, in terms of build quality, this is a mix between plastics and metal alloys, so very lightweight metals to keep this relatively lightweight but it feels built really well, very solid. The gasket yoke design is the best that we've seen from Godox. They've really improved in this department across various products lately, so very happy to see that. Although, pesky composite plastic handle. I don't think the parabolic or this LED deserves this light of a handle, this plastic handle. That won't last forever. It, it just feels like such an easy place for the light to break and it can so easily be replaced by something a bit more heavy duty. So I just don't understand why they don't do it. Other than that, everything feels really well built. The chip itself is behind glass, so it is protected. I personally throw away the plastic protector because I never want this thing turned on and accidentally have the plastic on there because then the set's gonna smell terrible. I rely on the glass to protect it, so it's nice for this to have it. If this does get scratched, it's not the end of the world and at least your chip isn't being damaged at all. Now, in terms of who this M600 is for, I think it's for the indie filmmaker. They're really targeting the same people that Aperture and Nanlite are targeting with their expanded offerings, their lights beyond 300 watts. Beyond 300 watts, you're really past the territory for like indoor YouTuber or somebody making videos for their brand. I really can't see a need for beyond 300 watts there. 600 watts and up, you're really talking about a light that can be flexible for some indie filmmaking on indoor sets. And also is just flirting with that level that is actually useful outdoors in daylight. You're still gonna have to keep this type of light relatively close in order to do anything with it in daylight. So I would call the M600 an entry level production light. Now I said in the product name, this is the M600D. I assume that D stands for daylight, but the fact that they included that D means that there's likely either a tungsten or a bicolor version of this in development and on the way. So if that's more your speed, then keep an eye out for that. I can't imagine that they would put the D on the first product in a lineup if they weren't already working on it, but that's just a theory. So don't, I'm not telling you guys that it's right around the corner. I have no idea if a bicolor one is in development. I just think it's safe to assume. All right, guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video on the M600. It's honestly probably a bit beyond my needs, at least for my YouTube stuff. I have never felt that the VL300 was not bright enough, although I do have some work coming up that is a bit of a step up in terms of production level on the video side of things. So I'm really excited to put this to the test in those environments, and I'll definitely follow up with any additional details. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you want to see more. Hit that like button if you enjoyed, and I'll catch you in the next one.